With that done, we now have a fully customized window manager. Hope you're ready, because on this episode of I Use Arch By The Way, we're ricing DWM. To get started, we're going to need three dependencies. Nitrogen for setting wallpapers, LX Appearance for changing themes, and MLocate for searching files on our computer. To install, we type sudo pacman-capital S, then the name of our three packages, each separated by a space. All links and commands will be left below. Now let's get the foundation of our rice, the wallpaper. Everything stems from this. If you're having trouble finding wallpapers, two sites to check are Reddit Wallpapers and Wallpapers.com. Once we've downloaded an image, we need a folder to put this in. You can use any folder you want. I'm going to create a folder inside of user slash share because it's out of the way. Now, let's move our image into our chosen folder. We can do this with the MV command. Note, when we do anything that's not in our home directory, we will need to use sudo for admin privileges. With that done, it's time to start nitrogen. To set our wallpaper, we select preferences, then add to add our wallpaper folder to nitrogen. Once that's done, select your wallpaper, then click apply. Now, if we go to a different workspace, we can see our wallpaper was set. If the sizing isn't quite right, try changing the option in the bottom left from automatic to scaled. The last thing we need to do is add a command to our .xinitrc file, so when DWM is restarted, our wallpaper will be restored. To do this, let's cd to our home directory and type .xinitrc. If you watched the last tutorial, your file should look like mine. If not, make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link below. We're going to add the following command to make sure nitrogen is restored every time we start our display server. Once that's done, save and quit. Now let's customize Rofi. If we type Rofi-show run in our terminal, we can see a program called Rofi Theme Selector. However, because Rofi doesn't come with many themes, I'm going to be downloading some. Pressing Ctrl plus C to quit Rofi, we can see the folder that is checked for themes. Let's CD into this folder. Now, let's search for some themes. I'm going to use the ones from LR-Tech. By the way, I'll leave a link below to all GitHub repos and dependencies shown in this video. After copying the link and going back to our terminal, type git clone and then control plus shift plus V to download. Now we can CD into the repo in the themes directory inside. As you can see, this is where all the themes are. To use the themes, we must move them back to the Rofi slash themes directory, which is two levels back. So to do this, we type MV for move, star to specify we want all files inside this directory, then dot dot slash to go back one level, then another dot dot slash to move back two directories. Now that that's done, let's CD ourselves back to the Rofi themes directory. Since we've extracted all the themes, we don't need this folder anymore. So to delete, we type RM for remove and dash R, which stands for recursive meaning it will delete everything inside the specified folder, like subfolders and everything else. Now, if we run rofi-show run again, all of our new themes will appear. Once you've selected a theme you like, press Alt plus A to accept the new theme, and the next time Rofi opens, our theme will be reflected. The last thing we'll be changing before jumping into DWM source code is our global theme. This dictates how our applications and icons look. To get started, there are two sites I'd like to recommend, the KDE Store and Gnome Look. These sites both have a decent selection of themes, icons, and more. Once we've got a theme we like, it's time to move our themes to our system's themes directory. To figure out where that is, let's open LX Appearance. You'll notice there's one theme already called Rally. To find this, let's update our mlocate database by typing sudo update db. Now, if we search for RALA, we can see its location. Let's cd there. With that done, let's move our theme to this directory. Note the dot at the end specifies our current directory. 
Because my folder is a .xz, I will need to extract the contents using tar. To do this, we type tar xf for extract file. Now we can remove the xz file and we're good to go. When we open LX Appearance again, our themes will be displayed. With that out of the way, it's time to customize our DWM source code. To start, I'm going to be adding emojis to my workspace tags instead of numbers 1 through 9. To do this, we're going to need a font that supports emojis. For this, I'm going to get Nerd Font Symbols because it supports a wide range of emojis and TTF Vera code which will be used for my terminal editor later in the video. I'm also going to be installing a photo editing software called GIMP so I can get the exact color codes to match my wallpaper. Now let's check our config.dev.h file inside our DWM folder. The first thing I'm going to do is change the border pixel variable so we have a clear visibility of our active window border. Next, continuing from last video when we installed gaps, I'm going to change the gap value between my windows. Now, to add our emojis, we need to add our newly installed font symbols to our listed fonts in DWM by appending it to our fonts list. Note that the weight being bold is optional and the size, which is in pixels, can also be changed. Now, if we search for Nerd Font Cheat Sheet or go to nerdfonts.com, we get this site with a ridiculous amount of emojis to choose from. Pick whichever ones you want, then click copy icon and paste in your tags list. Next, I'm going to be changing the colors of my active window border and status bar. To start, I'm going to create a new color variable like the ones immediately above. The only difference being the variable name and color code. To get colors that match my wallpaper, I'm going to open the wallpaper inside GIMP and click on the color picker tool. Then clicking on the desired color, we see the color appear on the left side square. Clicking this, we can see our color code displayed. Alternatively, we could have started here and clicked the desktop dropper tool to get the color straight from our desktop without opening our wallpaper image. After grabbing all the color codes desired and adding them to variables, all we need to do is specify the ones to use. To do this, if we look into our colors array, we see the foreground, background, and border color. The scheme norm specifies inactive windows and scheme cell specifies selected windows. The second item or BG will change our status bar colors. The border will change our window borders. I'm going to change my status bar to match the color of my wallpaper's background and window border color to match the tan Linux penguin for some contrast. Finally, because I've seen lots of people online asking for recommendations about patches, I'll go through a few of the ones I use. First is full gaps for the aesthetic. Second is cycle layout, which allows us to toggle through tiling, floating, and monocle mode by pressing mod plus control plus comma instead of having to use three separate keybinds. Third is hide vacant tags. This will hide all tags that are not being used, which helps for organization as well as aesthetic. Lastly is switch to tag, which can be used to automatically open certain apps in specific tags. I'm not going to go over install, but once again, if you're confused, refer to the last video for a step-by-step -step guide. With that done, we're ready to build DWM again. To do this, we type sudo make install and remember to delete the config.h file or else our changes won't take effect. Now, when we restart DWM, it should look something like this. Moving on, we get to arguably the most important part of the video, compositing. In case you're not familiar, a compositor is something used by desktop environments to provide a smooth experience on things like games, videos, animations, and more. By default, a window manager doesn't have this, and without one, we may get screen tearing or inconsistent video views. So, to avoid this, let's set one up. I'm assuming you have an Arch AUR helper like Peru or Ye if you're watching this, but if not, I'll leave a link below to a great YouTuber named DistroTube who has a tutorial on setting that up. With that said, to install our compositor, we type Peru or Ye, depending on which AUR helper you have, dash capital S PyCom Git, which will give us the newest version of PyCom allowing for terminal blur. Now we need to create a PyCom folder inside our config directory so PyCom can find our custom changes. Once that's created and we've CD'd inside, we need an actual config file to edit. Now by default, PyCom comes with one, so to find that, let's update our mlocate database by typing sudo update db. Next, search for it by typing pycom.conf. 
There are two listed here because I've already done this, but the one we're interested in is the ending dot example located in etc xdg directory. Let's move this example file to our current PyCom directory. Remember, the dot indicates our current directory. Now, let's rename this file to pycom.conf, which can be done with the MV tool. Now, to appreciate these changes as we go, let's add pycom to our xinitrc file before editing. With that done, let's get to it. There's a lot of functionality with PyCom. For a full list, be sure to read this file thoroughly. It's pretty self-explanatory, but what we're gonna focus on is rendering, corners, transparency, and blur. The first thing to change in this file is the render engine. By default, it's xRender, which in my experience has tearing issues and doesn't work that great, so I'm going to change this to GLX. Nice. Next is adding rounded corners. To do this, if we search for corner radius, we can see a description letting us know if we increase this variable, it'll increase the rounded edges of our windows. On to opacity. This determines the transparency of windows. The inactive opacity specifies how transparent we want windows that are not actively focused on. This is pretty self-explanatory, but I would like to note the opacity rule. This allows us to specify apps to have opacity for. Because certain windows I'll never want to have opacity for, like a PDF reader or Firefox, I'm going to specify the apps I want transparency for here. Now because I'm in a virtual machine, PyCom's advanced rendering isn't going to work, so I'll do the rest of this section on my regular PC. As you can see, I have several apps specified. Take this down simply, the first number is the opacity level. 95 means almost no transparency, so everything is pretty much normal. Class G is a default specified class by PyCom we can use to associate our changes with. Next is the app name. To find this, we need a dependency called xorg-xprop. Once that's installed, if we open the app we want transparency for, then in our terminal type xprop, we can see our mouse change, and on clicking our app, we are given a class name. This is what we put as our app. Next, which is optional, there is an and focused, then underneath an and exclamation point focused. If you notice, these variables have the same app name with different opacities. So what I'm saying to PyCom is, when I'm actively focused on the app, I want an opacity of 95, but when I'm not focused, I want an opacity of 85, which you can see the difference here. Lastly is blur. Here we need to specify a blur method. There are several types we can choose from. The most popular one, which I'll be using, is dual Kuwasi. This one also seems to be the most stable out of all the options. Blur strength affects how blurred our windows are, i.e. the less the strength, the more clear the background is, the higher the strength, the more it looks like frosted glass. Finally, for these changes to take effect, we need to change blur background from false to true. With that said, those are all the basics of PyCom and we move on to our last segment. Started. Since the bulk of our changes are now done, it's time to give ourselves ease of access. Instead of every time we log in having to type start x, let's add some code to auto start our display server. To find this, we go to Arch Linux manual online. If you're ever lost, this is always the first place you should check. If we scroll down on the x init page, you see that there's code provided to do exactly what we want. Now if we add this to our bash profile, the next time we log into our PC, DWM and everything in our display server will be started automatically. Next, to add the signature I use arch by the way function to our terminal, we're going to need a program called NeoFetch. Once that's done, let's open our bash rc file. Here we can add commands that will be executed every time we open a terminal. Let's add NeoFetch to the end. Now when we open a terminal, we'll get the arch logo. The last thing to do now is customize alacrity to our liking. To find the default config, type locate alacrity.yml. We don't need a folder for this, we can copy this directly into our .config directory. The primary change here is font. To do this, we need to uncomment font normal, and family. This is where we will put Fira code or a font of your choosing. 
Lastly, we're going to add style and set this to regular. Now, if we search for size, we can uncomment this variable and increase this to our liking. If we open a terminal, it should look something like this. With that said, if you made it to the end, congrats, because we covered a lot of info in this video. If you guys got any value out of this, make sure to like and comment I use Arch, by the way, below. Until next time, this is Trevor Satori, signing off.